First, gonna do a character who uh, you could probably see anywhere. Just a loud, rude, obnoxious character. You can see, you can put him in any situation. Let's just say uh, a deli contestant here in New York. Just a loud, obnoxious guy. Hey, boy. How you doing? Let me get the, uh, what's the special today? What's the specials? <laughs> Give me the ham and cheese. Come here, 2 dollars nine, nine. Oh, that's nine. awesome. See, how much is it? Shut up. Dummy, two dummies. You're blowing each other. We need a drink. Oh, this is brutal. I was cut out the entire first show of Saturday Night Live. I bring my dad, who is affected by nothing. I go, Dad, come here. I want you to meet the producer, Lauren Michaels. And Lauren goes, <laughs> he goes, hey, nice to meet you, Jim. Uh, you know, your son's great. My father goes, so I uh, flew up from Florida. See the kid on the show. He won on it. And Lorne Michaels is looking at him. He said, well, you know, that happens with this show. And I'm, I can assure you he'll be on next week because Chevy Chase has already uh, inquired about him. Gives a shit about next week. I'm not here. What happened tonight? And Lorne's like, OK, have a good night. Oh, that was just That's like, awesome, screw man. you. Why wasn't my kid in the game? Because yeah. the show sucked. Oh. Wait a minute. What? Ooh. What? I was... What? You blew off? Mentally or physically? <laughs> it won't be that hard. You're right. I'm kidding. Oh. You better be kidding. Some of you might know from Pat Bates, the others know from Saturday Night Live, here is Jim Brewer. I took him on tour, man. He's hilarious. He's 84 years old. You want to sit out here? Hey, go ahead, sit down. Sit down, Muff. <laughs> I can go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. All right. The one guy he got to meet was, uh, who was this? Stallone? Yeah, he went to shit and a hug at him. He went to shit and a hug at him? That's, it, that's when you know he's like 80, comes from a term, you're like, what? He went to shit and a hog ate him. Where's Bill? He went to shit and a hog ate him. My dad was definitely older than other parents. He didn't look older, so I didn't get that he was older. You can't go what on the bus? You can't go poopies on the bus. Poo poo? Yep. Then suppose we shit in our pants. And we got a problem. And I didn't realize he was older until someone would call him like, hey, is that your grandfather? I'm like, no, it's not my grandfather, it's my father. You know, I would tell, I remember being in school and people talking about whatever, like Veterans Day, and I said, my dad was in World War II, and I went, he wasn't in World War II, maybe he was in Vietnam. No, he was in World War II. That's when I started realizing like he was, a little bit older than the other fathers. All right, Dorian. Dorian, give me a huggy. Say goodbye to Daddy. Say goodbye to Disney World. I see you at Disney World. Like, this tour really was to take care of him. I, I knew he needed to get out of the house. I knew he was deteriorating on his own. I knew this would give him so much life.
first time I really had to take care of my father was probably about two years ago. He just kind of gave up and he wasn't washing himself anymore. And he felt very awkward. His pride was shot. That I couldn't take watching, so I decided, you know what? Let me give this a shot. Do I want to scrub another man's behind? No. Do I want to? Do I want to wash another man's yo-yo? No. But I knew he would do this for me if he had to. I might have to go check him in because all he did was pee. But that was the most disgusting smelling pee ever. It smelled in my life. I dry heat for. 10 minutes in the toilet just now. Ugh. I do have a diaper for the elderly man that hasn't gone to the toilet yet and you're about to make a long bus trip and you're not allowed to poop on the bus. I highly suggest man diapers. Jacket. Hold on there, Muffy. Won't get around. Watch yourself, right? Cause you push your butt. Push up. All right, ready? Yeah, your ass is He grew up with no mother. Ten kids. Well, zip it up, please. He has every right to pull out a violin and play it, play that fiddle forever and ever. It's 270 degrees. 270. Yeah, come on. I'll walk you in there first. Come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, come down one step. For a guy that grew up really dirt poor with a raging alcoholic father, then finally get out of that household to be shipped off to war, spend three years of his life every day not knowing if he was going to live or die. He got a divorce after having three kids, and I'm sure that really, really bothers him. I'm trying to make it to the curb. I got you. I got you. You're all right. You're okay. Move over here. To have all that in your back pocket. He never, ever, ever complained. He never, ever, ever showed any of that pain. He never showed any frustration and he just was a man's man and my father from day one It's on the X, 98X Charleston's Rock Station. Heather, our traffic girl, is in the studio today. Normally we call her a traffic center, uh, but today she was very excited about uh, meeting Jim Brewer, who was also in the studio. Hello, Jim. How are you? Very good. How are you? Good, man. What's going on with you now? Obviously, you got a huge tour. Uh, well, today's right. it. This is where we start. And it's raw stand-up. I haven't done raw, in-your-face stand-up in uh, quite a long time. So this is going to be a little... Uh, a little different than uh, probably what you've seen in the past. All right, brother. Uh, Nickelback. Let's do some Nickelback. It rocks. And if it rocks, it's on the X. 98X Charleston's Rock Station. You did look a little starstruck. I, I, yeah. How could I not be? I watch him all the time in one of my favorite movies. Half-Baked. I'm not Brian from Half-Baked. And I'm not Go Boy. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing straight out of high school. <laughs> Another brick on the wall. Good shit I am. I knew Dave Chappelle. He came to me, he's like, hey man, you gotta play my half brother Brian, man. You look high as shit. Ten years ago since uh the sign I lied. <laughs> Dad's up. what's up, Pops? You good? There he is. Stick your head out, muff. I was here 
here to see Jim Brewer, famous, and I'm taking him home. Okay. He doesn't even have to pay rent. <laughs> the dad. The dad. I'm a senior. The dad. The dad. All right. I gotta go. I gotta go too. I'll be there then. I'll think about you. I'll be there then. What? I'll be there then. That's Sherman. Goodbye. Goodbye. Fine. It's then. over. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Stay with you and they can go to Tampa. He's staying with me and y'all are going to Tampa, okay? I'll meet you in Tampa. You yes. want to go surfing? I didn't bring a bathing suit. You didn't bring a bathing suit? I didn't yeah. either. Well, we can go naked. We're going skinny dipping. Ooh. What has happened? It's not yours, that's yours. Wait a minute. In the four weeks I wanted to get to know him, but not, I mean, I think I know him, but at the same time, I don't really know him. It's got a little hazelnut in it, but it doesn't have... What? It has some hazelnut in it. Hazels? Hazelnut. You put the, you cut, cut the nuts and you slice them, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you then, put them in here. Yeah, and that's how I flavor it. Oh, I didn't know that. What's the earliest you remember being a kid? Getting late or what? <laughs> no, not getting late. Well, that too. How old were you when that happened? Let go. I got it. Let Wait go. a minute. I got it. When I got laid? I don't know. No, as a kid. I'm still a virgin. Oh, you are? Yeah. I didn't know that. How did I come around? Well, you were just a joke. <laughs> to view your dad as one of your children is really part of a natural process. As much as we try to fight nature and life, nature and life is you're a child, you're taken care of. Then you go through the experiencing life years, and then you create life. And then you're the father, and then as your children grow, and then your parents then start to cripple away, and then now you're the caretaker. It's a natural flow of life. You need a haircut. Your ass needs a haircut. You need to be shaved. I gotta your cut ass. your eyebrows. You're a oh, mess. Your ass needs a haircut. Gotta get him to poop, because I don't need him pooping on a bus. I don't have to. All right, just check it. He thinks I'm gonna shit on the bus. That's right. Turn around. Straight ahead, we need you to walk. Why are you standing here? Let's go. Get up! He pretends he's stupid and annoys me. So I'll just stand still for five minutes. I'm like, I'm like, come on, let's go. So I went to the mood, he's like, ah! All right, make a scene. Now you work your way out. There it is. Amazing. Do it all on his own. I can do more. I can do the T-Rex. I can run like the raptor. <laughs> Biggest bugs in the world, right here in Florida. Drive down the street at night. That's <laughs> scary, man. <laughs> and they'll come looking for you like three days later. You open the door, you're like, well, who's there? Is that your car parked over there, man? Charlie, come here, bring my brother out. Guy, I don't want an antenna. It's him! <laughs> he just kept driving! <laughs> Take them all. I don't want them. I can't. I gotta 
to go do stuff. I don't have time to eat all those grapes. Yeah, you've got them. I can't cut them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's loud enough to it. Where's that door lead to? Can you pee in there? I believe you can do that. Don't pee all over the toilet. I <laughs> Oh. Very good job. Get out. Ah, yeah. Nice. Good job. Yeah. Mm. It's hot. Oh, yeah, I got my dad here tonight. Just, we used to live down here too. It's 85, 84. 84. Whew. That's that's it's heavy, man. I mean, he's, you don't know what's going on. It's just, like any second. <laughs> well, it's true, man. And you can be trying to fart, like don't push too hard. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I remember you told a story once where um, you were over there and you had, when you were in the war, when your planes would go off, there'd always be at least one plane missing when you come back. But there was one time when you went out and you didn't go on your plane. Someone wanted your spot. They needed flight pay. They needed four hours. And that's all he needed, and he was out of there. Yeah. And then that was the first time your plane never came back. You, you asked a lot of questions. Well, I'm just curious. I want to know these things. Oh. I want to tell my kids and stuff. Mm, you can tell them how much money you make. <laughs> yeah. And you can make how much? $200? 200 bucks. After we're through bullshit. One we're through bullshit. Oh. I didn't know much about my dad as a soldier until later in life. Other people go like, you know, your father was a gunner on those planes to knock out the torpedo droppers and to go after battleships. Because your father was nuts. Yeah. All right, I don't understand. If you're in the Philippines, right, you're at war, right? I wasn't in the Philippines in the war. I was in the jungle. Right. Guam. Yeah. All that stuff. When you're in the jungle, and you guys, do you have money on you? Yeah. Hey, some whores come along. Out of the jungle? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't bother, male or female, I screwed them all. <laughs> <laughs> the hell are you there? Three years. Where were you? Uh, South Pacific. We're in South Pacific. Ah, Guam here, blah, blah, blah. Please stop. Where'd you stay the longest? What? Where'd you stay the longest of the islands? Yeah, I could get laid. He didn't talk about it a whole lot, so it's, it was very hard to find exact detail. What do you want to hear? When I started asking him, you know, did people shoot at you? How close were you? How close range were you when people shot at you? He'd always say it, and then he'd completely divert his attention. I was in New Hebrides. I was in Guadalcanal. I was in uh, New Guinea. Where do you want to go? Like, all right, that's cool. What do you want to know about that stuff for? Which one was the worst one? They were all worse. Not the worst. Damn worse. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring my glasses? No, you No, I didn't bring your glasses. It's not the easiest thing in the world to take care of uh, elderly, especially if they're your own, because you're still attached to this is my mom and this is my dad and my father shouldn't be this way and my mother shouldn't be this way and this is not the way it's supposed to be, so you get caught up in that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And my dad, they didn't know if it was a mini stroke, it wasn't a mini stroke. Well, my, I, I think the worst part was when he had the bad reaction to the medicine and he was, he was done. They stuck him in the hospital a couple days, and he came back, and he was off. And everyone was like, he needs a 24-hour nurse. You need help. And during that time, the decision was he's going to have people come and take care of him. He was definitely embarrassed to have someone else scrubbing him. I could tell this was more of a convenience for everyone who just didn't want to deal. Keep your hands warm. 
I had to make a decision where, all right, is this really right? Or is he gonna get so much more out of, I'm committing to this, get everyone out of here, I will do this. I didn't want to exhaust myself looking for a real caretaker when I knew, you know what, I could do this. Here we go. Whee! Yeah. How hard can it be to wash him? And I tell you, it was the beginning of one of the greatest experiences of my life. Hey, you. And the minute I said, I can do this, and I'll make it a project, and I'll do it my way, and I'll find out what makes him come, what makes him comfortable. Here we are. We're going across the street. We're going to go to good old Bobby Evans. I learned a lot about him. When I started playing his music in the bathroom, he'd come alive. No, really, don't stop in a wheelchair. It's all good. No, really, rush to work. But that's 85. He's air guitaring to Johnny Cash and Hank Williams. And I saw his childhood coming out. And he started talking about living in Manhattan and, and swimming in the river. And he'd ask me questions. He would talk to me like, a, you know, how's your daughter? And she learned to swim yet? And it was such a discovery. It was mind blowing. Thank you. OK. I'm going to have pancakes and coffee. Mm-hmm. You want something to play with? I love busting his chops. I love getting a rise out of him. <laughs> when you go on the night, and then I'm going to do everything I can to screw up your act. Here come the bouncy bugs. Boing, 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 Yes! <laughs> you are no fun. And it's not, you know, some people will see it like, hey, what's, you know, how cruel. If it was cruel, you would see that he would, he would voice to cut it out. But this is his only play. Even when you're older, you got to play. If you don't play, that, that, that's the true spirit that keeps you going. Look at you. Dude, what happened to you? You trying to kill you? Throwing yourself down? Oh, really? On the have, kitchen floor. Have you fallen again? No. Do you feel better after we stop those pills? If I take a few joints and uh, I feel great. <laughs> no. Yeah. That should be his spot, huh? That should be his word of the day. We'll do words of the tour yeah. and just do hit things like meh. <laughs> meh. Yeah. Yeah. Or that. What? Meh. What? <laughs> meh. What? <laughs> I'm gonna do that tonight while you're doing your act. <laughs> Pleasant. Just so people laugh at me. He has a very dark, dry sense of humor. You know, when you see darkness, you also have a dark sense of humor. Would you yeah, throw yeah. him out, please? Yeah, throw him out along with my husband. <laughs> yeah, I'm with your husband. He's a fag anyway. Watch it, slow down. <laughs> Take it down a level. He loves cursing, loves swear words, loves it. It's his passion. Just drink your coffee and shut up. I'm joking, you gotta get up. I gotta get up? Yeah. Oh, I get up? No, you can just sit there for the next five hours. Sit here for five hours? <laughs> like sometimes he'll be out of it. Free hand. I've seen Alzheimer's and I've seen people with dementia and you know, they try to say that about my dad in the beginning, and I didn't buy it one bit because he wouldn't be that way with me. No, you're gonna go up the stairs. 
Uh, just a minute, I got turned around. I have noticed he'd have a hard time remembering some of his grandchildren. He'd have a hard time remembering some of his own children. And I can tell if that's part of a release in life. Like, well, I don't see them a whole lot, and they don't see me a whole lot, so I don't think about them a whole life. I don't know, I have a hard time understanding the whole dementia thing, and it obviously exists, but I think we expect them to be done computers, and they know everything now, and they don't. They have to be just like a child. You have to constantly talk to them and constantly show them pictures, and whether they remember it or not, you really have to keep up with that. Find more in there too. Can I share a look up um, sound system effects? Yes. Yes, indeed. We'll have to look at that, won't we? Yes, Mr. James Weir. You've got to be careful this thing. Oh. Put that down. Jeez. That's not a toy. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. This works the shoulders, the biceps. And it works, the reflex is really, really good. <clears throat> Just gets the blood uh, moving. Give me some pineapple. So you don't fall for this. This is called the ignoring effect, where they ignore you when technically they're really sizing you up. Okay. To grab the, Give me some. You almost had that. Do you need help? You got it. Come on. Do I need help after you're coming? I got it all off. Well, you're a grown man. You can do it on your own. You're doing good. Oh, go shit in your bonnet. I find things to play with him, whether it's a little rough or a little dark or he loves slapstick. I roll up the paper and then he pretends he's going to look for a knife or a fork to stab me. Trying to fork me? Is that, yes. Is that a nice fatherly thing to do? Yes. I'm calling a social worker. I wouldn't give a shit if you called Santa Claus. That's child abuse. What's this? This? Yeah. No. No. That's deer turd. Deer turd? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, deer turd with like cheddar, you can't beat it. Very good. Are they raisins or prunes? No, they're turds. They're mm. mouse turds. Well, I'm not talking with your mouse says, and they're drooling all over. What are you, three? Two back to go. I'll go sit in your bonnet. And then can you drool in it? What? You heard me. Go shit in your fucking hat. There's times where he's not in the mood for it, but there's, I also realize he's getting at the point where um, if he's not in the mood for it, it's kind of fun to pull it out of him. What a... My body loves over the ocean. Me as a comedian, I started off where my mission in life was to crack someone who's Got a sour puss on their face all the time. Oh, bring yeah. my body to me. Fucking oh, <laughs> I throw that shit at you. <laughs> bring back. Bring back. I'll keep throwing them till you stop. Oh, bring back my body to me. Go pick up the cheese. Bring back. Bring back. Oh, bring back my body to me. You fucker, you. To me.
Thank you. It's just like taking toys out of the box. Yeah, he's not in the mood, but I'll, I'll probe him to make him in the mood. And he's in the mood. And if I really feel he's really not in the mood, which there are times like that, then I'll just let him be. And I'll tack him later when he's sleeping. How are you? Wow. What was I like as a kid? You were a brat. I was? Yes. What do you mean I was a brat? Because you always wanted to get laid. <laughs> yeah. Now do I get to 200? No, absolutely not. Um, when do I get that? When I say it's over. Mm -hmm. I've been up linked and downloaded, I've been inputted and outsourced, I know the upside of downsizing, I know the downside of upgrading. I'm a high tech low life. I'm new wave, but I'm old school, and my inner child is outward bound. I take it slow, I go with the flow, I ride with the tide, I got glide in my stride. Driving and moving, sailing and spinning, jiving and grooving, wailing and winning. Very rarely do you hear my dad go, ha! <laughs> that's, as, that's as far as he ever laughed my whole life. Here you go, ha! <laughs> that's when you're killing with my father. He's a, mm hmm, ha, mm hmm. Ah. Another word you don't hear too often is dingleberries. George Collin had him going, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this guy. I think it's because dingleberries is one of them words you don't say too much past your 10th birthday. <laughs> cornhole is another word you don't hear enough. That there is a posthumous multiple cornhole entry wound. His attitude helped me tremendously in life as far as that. He's seen the worst. He's seen the rots of the darkest, deepest depths of hell. And life is not that difficult. I took a lot of his laid back, take it down a level attitude. Because it just makes all the sense in the world coming from a guy like that. I gotta say though, you know they get through high school points there. Oh, they used to get by all the time together. The character did. You had no idea back all the time. It was a character. Wait a minute, that wasn't really you? What? That's not a normal life? We got Jim Brewer at Studio. He's gonna be at the University of Michigan Flex tonight. He grew up in Long Island. I grew up in Long Island, a little uh, little white trash, blue collared guy. My dad was a uh, garbage man. <laughs> so much for coming in. Thank, Thank you, Jim Brewer. Love you, good. If you had to go back, if you had to go back and engage in the whole land, well, what age would you go back to? Age? Yeah. Any age, ever. Yeah. Tomorrow you can go right back to that age. I can't figure where I'm hitting the most tall. Yeah, boy. What age was I that I was getting booked? <laughs> what age was that? In the most time. Well, what age was that? Remember? Got six years old. Come on. I don't know how the fuck do I know. You know? I take any 16 inch grid. 16? Yeah. No, seriously. You think 16. 16 you go to? Yeah. You don't have to take my picture. I've already been discovered. <laughs> yes, you have. Ha, ha, ha.
You're a good kid. I introduced my dad. My, uh, I flew him up from Florida. He was living in Florida. And uh, Sylvester Stallone comes on to host Saturday Night Live. He comes on, now my dad, he, I call him, I'm like, Dad, you want to come up with Sylvester Stallone next week? He's like, ah, oh, yeah. I read somewhere he lives down in Florida. You think there's an Elks where he's at? I said, I don't know. I really, I, I don't know. So I fly him up, you know, fly him up to the show. He gets to meet Sylvester Stallone. Stallone's there. I go, Dad, Dad, come here. Sylvester wants to say hello. I asked him, everything's cool. And this is Stallone. Yeah, is it cool you say hello to my dad? He's like, yeah, I wear one too fat. I'd love to meet your father. <laughs> hey, Mr. Brewer, it's a pleasure to meet you. I heard a lot about you. My dad, I'm not, I'm not even going to make this story up. I swear, I don't need to. He goes, uh, how are you, Sylvester? How's it hanging? A little left. He's a, your father's hilarious, hilarious. You're a great guy, great guy. Where you from? Where did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in Kentucky. I lived in Long Island after the Navy and after World War II in a big one, you know? That's awesome. <laughs> well, I don't know what I mean, yeah, I know what I mean. My like, so where in Florida you still reside? As well as a matter of fact, I got a place, it's called Hollywood, Florida, believe it or not. And my dad goes, that's real nice. They got an Elks Club there? Dollar 99 spaghetti, or you can eat on Wednesday nights, another dollar bush light all night long. All night long. Still over there. <laughs> what? Dollar 99, all you can eat, spaghetti. With meatballs, all you can eat. <laughs> hey, hey, whatever rocks your boat, I mean. <laughs> this is a true story, man. And, he go, and then he goes, uh, I'll tell you what, I don't know about no moose club, but uh, uh, you come down and see me, Planet Hollywood, I'll set you up. He said, been there, $15 a beer, fuck that, bringing you the Elks. <laughs> I realized by the time I was almost 30, he never said I love you, ever, ever, ever. I realized too, every time I hug him, he feel uncomfortable. Instead of getting mad and sad, it made me realize like, wow, this man has never had affection. And that's, that's just the way he was raised. You, you can't teach a kid how to make pizza if all he ever made was a cheeseburger. Is that an analogy? <laughs> <laughs> Today, on the bus, my dad said he's got to go to the bathroom. So I help him up and he starts waddling over the bathroom. But I smell something. It doesn't smell like it's a little harsher than something that would flow out his air. So I'm like, you all right? He's like, I am bad. Go to the bathroom. And then like 15 minutes later, he's sticking up. The whole, the whole front cabinet is just raw. So I open the door, I'm like, you're right? And he's like, I'm wearing my pants. I'm like, <laughs> So I'm like, stay, stay in the toilet. I'm gonna get you clothes. I found him some other clothes. Open the door, I started, the smell just came out and started humping me right in my nose. Went right to my gag reflexes. So when I opened, I started, up, uh, uh, and he's like, oh, geez, I shut the door. I just think about it. <laughs> What's up? What, you leave me here? Um, well, I can't get you down on the stage. So, you want to come down? Yeah. There you go. The rest is all you. I'm with you. Okay. I'm heading back this way. 
and so are you. I'm going that way. Well, you go that way, I'm going this way. You have a good night. Your breath smells like ass. Uh, I'm not even kidding. Your breath smells gnarly. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you say? I'm waiting a minute. There's that bottle, it's still laying there. I know, get a seat. You driving tonight? No, I'm sleeping here. Let's go, you're in here. Where? Right in there. Oh, that's the second one. Take that. Mm. It's like real. Squeeze it all out, too. Ah, shit. You gonna shit? I think. I don't know. Can I bust that toilet? Not if you gotta shit. Just turn around and shit. Wait a minute. Well, turn around. Don't shit your pants. Oh, man. You shit already, didn't you? Uh, but... Did you shit already? No. You good in here? Yes, I'm in here. Okay. Good? Hey, I'm good. What did I do with my cane? I don't know. What did you do to your pants? Oh, that's just a wee wee. <laughs> I don't worry about that. Um, let me see. What did you do with the cane? How's your ass? You falling apart? Yes, I'm falling apart. <coughs> oh, my God. Oh, go shit in your bonnet. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Go shit in your fucking head. Yeah. Oh my god. You about to finish it. Oh. One night on the tour, I think it was the day he he crapped himself on the bus. <coughs> There was a lot of emotions. A part of me was embarrassed for him. Part of me was 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 annoyed because I told him to go to the bathroom before we left, and he said, "I don't need to go, and I don't need to go." I'm going to bed. Are you? No, I'm going out all night. You what? I'm gonna party until I fall down. Where? Up the street. Where, where's up this? It's about a mile. It's about. Oh? A hundred yard dash from here. So that night, we got in. I was done. I was exhausted. My neck was killing me from stress. And I just wanted to put him in the bed, go out, have some beer, and catch a really good yeah. buzz. Ooh, your hands are cold. You all right? Your hands are cold. I knew he felt shamed, because he was like, where are you going? Where, where, are you going out? I said, yeah, just, just get something to eat. I'm starving. You want, you want me to, I, and, I'm, and I made it clear you're not coming. Where are we going? Oh, you're going to bed. Are you hanging out watching TV? I'm not going to watch TV. I think he could tell, like, I was done, and he felt, he felt like maybe he finally got to me, or at least that's what I was thinking. I felt, well, I'm going out, and I deserve this. How you, where are you going? Going out to the bar. Well, where? The local bar. Well, uh, no. Want to watch TV for a while? I uh, did not on TV. Nothing? Did you just spit? I definitely felt guilty. I felt like this is what it was almost like the kid fell down the stairs today and he got embarrassed by everyone. And what he really needs is someone just there to say, it's OK. You don't have to hug him. You have to hold him. Just let the kid go to sleep and be in the house so they know you're in the house. And I wasn't going to give that to him, although in my heart I felt I should. Want to play you some Johnny Cash while you're hanging out? 
Where they at? Where you going? Bennigan's. Who is that? It's a sure, it's a short walk. I'll wheel you there. Twenty after those time to call her. One. Twenty. You need some rest. What? You need to rest your butt. Please, it's please end. Fun and I do six pack and he goes, I got How far will I Snuff you tonight. Now send me. Really got this bang? Yeah, don't worry about that. It pulls down to the bang. Are you gonna hang out here? He's going to the bed. Hold I'll load the bed and short roof. Okay. We're gonna hang out. Listen to Johnny. Just for a while. Okay. I'm at 30. 11. I'll meet at 11 next time. The time the bar is closed. One. And coming in like in total. Two and a half hours. Yeah. No one. I love you. So if I catch your waist tomorrow. Oh yeah, I'll remember everything. And then coach. <laughs> How many records have? Huh? How many records does have? But mm-hmm. oh, like twelve. I don't mind turning it off. Don't worry about that. I'll stop by itself. But everything's a move. I need money? No, thank you though. My number is here, do it $20? No. I'm okay. Thank you. You need this like this? Yeah. I went outside and I just looked up and it was a beautiful sky and I just started praying. I was like, man. What should I do here? Am I, am I being selfish? Should I, what am I gonna get out of more of this situation? Go drinking with the buddies? I could do that anytime, anywhere, the rest of my life. Am I gonna have a, the, one of the most amazing stories of all time tonight? Uh, I doubt it. Or do I go back to the room and let him know, you know what? I know you don't feel good about what happened today. And don't worry, I got, you got someone to back you. So I decided to go back to the room. And before I went to back to the room, I went, you know what? Go have fun. Don't take care of your father. Go be with your father. Go hang out. And he was like, what, what are you doing? I said, nah, I don't want to go to Bennigan's. I'm really not that hungry. It's cold out. And, I want to hang out. I said, do you mind if I hang out? I made it seem like, hey, do you mind if I'm invading your space? We hung out. I played Johnny Cash. I, I, I asked him some stuff about his childhood. And then we started talking about his situation. I started laughing. I started like, Dad, it sucks to be you, man. It really sucks to be you. I go, I can't imagine not being able to control myself from shitting. I said, you, you should tell people. You should tell people to let them know you're not, I bet you there's a thousand people like you. I bet you there's, he's like, oh yeah, I want to announce to the world, hey, guess what? James Brewer likes to shit himself for every other day. He started giggling. He started like, <laughs> and that was like the greatest gift in the world that night. And I really, sometimes you gotta take those moments and really measure them out. You going for self-righteous reasons or, can you really make a moment out of your life and someone else's? And you know what? I'm really glad I went with that way because now I got something to talk about the rest of my life.
on the following leg of the tour, we had to fly down to Tennessee where we would meet the bus and then drive down to uh, Alabama and New Orleans. It was just too much traveling for my dad, getting him to the airport and on a plane. So we decided it would be better for him to stay home and just rest. And let's go get her. Here, we find ourselves in the concierge club in Hoover, in a wonderful hotel. In these facilities, you find a lovely breakfast. Yes, yes, lovely breakfast, with perhaps corns of corn muffins and lovely pastries, is what we'd like to call it. And of course, we would find ourselves with teas. And if you feel like reading, perhaps you'd like to sit down and test your skills. Styrofoam cups. <laughs> Worth every penny. I was looking forward to relaxing with the crew that I was with. Go see a band, go have a beer, go relax, go see some sights, go to the zoo, and not have to have someone to care after. Something tells me we're gonna see like a rooster, a llama, and maybe like a spider monkey. There's a giraffe here. Can you imagine you're like living in the jungle of like Brazil? Hang out with your friends and all of a sudden you're stuck in Birmingham, Alabama. I could stare at a gorilla for hours. Why don't you come in and try to pet me, goat boy? Got enough time for train? They say everything you have to leave to miss it, and you don't realize you miss it till it's gone. I did miss just shaving him. I miss taking his clothes off. He's, I miss him being a shithead. <laughs> I, I, he's, he's like a cute little kid. Later leg of the tour when I brought him back, it was like seeing your kids again. It's seeing their excitement. He was so excited to be back with the boys. Oh, you're ready, baby. You guys go check out the bus. Come on. No hanging. 
Panky Panky. Oh no, I wouldn't. Turn everyone on to the greatest movie of all time. Raging Bull from my robot. Hey, love me, buddy, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, you hear me, Larry? Come, come. Larry! Shut up! <laughs> you savage. Valley Stream Town Hall, one of the famous stories of our town. It was a union meeting. A union meeting? Yeah. And what happened? I got in a fight. It was only one punch. <laughs> and I got out of there fast. The police guys. <laughs> He'll have a cheeseburger. Okay. Medium well. When's the last time you washed your hands? When's the last time you washed your face? About two months ago. Look at you, look like a mountain man. You can take this home with you. I don't think they'll like that. Are you gonna pay for it? It's got all stains on the bottom. Hmm. Who are you waving to? The people. See all the people? No, they're right there. Oh, you're waving to them. Yeah, they're waving right up. Hi. Oh, hi. They're right there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Why don't you go sit outside? Why don't you go sit outside? Ah, oh, brother. What? What time's the show? So I know what time to go to sleep. <laughs> it's rock and roll, baby. I remember one time being mad, like, oh, you don't love me, you don't tell I love you. And then I decided, like, you know, you haven't walked in his shoes, so. And I started saying, every time I would talk to him, every time I hang up, say, I love you, Dad. Every single time, I love you, Dad. And probably after about a good year, I said, I love you, Daddy. Anyway, uh, first it turned into, ah, 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 babe. First he would say, ah, okay, go ahead, kid. Ah, 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 babe. And I would giggle, because I knew he was like, it was so hard for him just to say that. Ah, 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 yeah, ah, you too. Then it went to you too. And then finally one day I said, I love you, Dad. And he goes, ah, I love you too. And I'd make a big deal of it. Just hung up and went, I turned to my wife and I'm like, he said. He said it. Hey, come on, we jokes. Let's be friends now, okay? There's like a God or something out there. Do he owe me money? If if they're out there, then I'll take them. Think like we 
we just born here and then die and the show's over. That's it. What else is there? Nothing. I don't know. You're born, you live, you work, you die. And everyone forgets you. I don't think people are going to forget you. I think you're... I think your legacy is going to carry on for quite a while. You think so? No, I know so. And as and soon as we finish it, you, you give me the 200 bucks. Yeah, I'll give you the 200 bucks. Wow. In American money. Yeah. After we're done. This tour, just being with him was beyond enough. My dad will not say, hey Jim, I love you. But I know he loves me. It's like seeing something on the ground. He knows it's there, I know it's there. So do we have to describe the whole thing or do we use what, what has worked forever? Laughing. Yo Pete, you want me to open the toilet seat? I remember me being little and he said, I want you to have so much more than me. I had nothing. I want you to have everything. I'll get your teeth ready here. And I got everything. I got children, I got a family, and I got him still. And I, I got what he wanted. Think about what it's going to be like when you don't have that. I do, but that's part of it all. I'll sleep right next to you. You know, he's not going to be here much longer. Yeah, I think about him not being here all the time. All right, going to bed. Good night, Muffy. Love you. Good night. Good night. Good night, meatball. Everything comes in timing. That's something where he may be on his last breath, and I may whisper something in his ear, or he may get a vision, and all all that sadness inside him, all that stuff that he thought, maybe all that tragedy he saw, which he never shows, but is obviously still in him, maybe that'll all be healed. I don't know, but I think it will be. has in their mind like what's heaven going to be like or what's the afterlife going to be like or what's is there or whatever whatever's in people's minds there was one moment that really made me uh I, I broke down and I just sobbed in the room my sister brought him to the Elks Club in Tarpon Springs Florida your ass is twisted about an hour later he calls up he sounded like a five-year-old kid that got a lollipop he went, Jerry, how about the Elks? I went, you're kidding. He went, I wouldn't shit a shitter. You want to sit out here? Oh, my God, I'm at the Elks. And I was like, that's going to be his heaven. When he dies, he's going to go to heaven, and he's going to walk through a door, and they're going to go, Jim, you got to make the meatballs today. Put on your hat, and you got to serve some Miller Lite. It's gonna be his heaven. I heard it. That's where he wants to go to. 